My dad bought this thinking he could flip it for a profit, but he was wrong. It's mine now. Hi everyone, welcome to Cola Flipper. My name's Lee, I'm a UK reseller. I buy items cheap at charity shops and car boot sales and I flip them on eBay for a profit. Um, today is Sunday 23rd of August. Um, come back from a boot fair earlier today. I've been quite restrained compared to normal. I've spent about half the amount I normally do. Um, but I've got a few, few decent items today, so um, I'll just take you through them. So the first item I picked up today is this Harry Potter platform nine and three quarters sign. Um, normally I try and aim to, to make about 20 pounds profit on each item, um, but this would have only made about 10 pounds. So I, I paid two. They usually seem to sell for around the 15, 17 pounds mark. Um, but I do break that, that guidelines, that rule um, on occasion depending on what it is and that's usually if it's something that's very very quick to photograph that doesn't require any cleaning um, and very very quick to list so being a, a, a wooden sign it's a one line item description uh, photo of the front photo of the back that's pretty much it so for a £10 profit that that would have been great um, but my eldest is now going to have it on her door and I have no um, no choice in that it seems so um, but yeah for two pound out still good little sign um, other bits I picked up today um, not for reselling but I use these for my reselling business so these aren't going to be sold on these are just um, uh, heel sorry uh, shoe trees but they're for ladies heel so that that goes into the toe section that bends into the heel and that keeps the shape of the shoe so um, there's a pound for the pair if you looking to buy these brand new you probably pay for something about seven quid but it's just useful to have a, a couple of pairs handy for when i'm doing the photos so um yeah for a pound that's absolutely perfect uh picked up a very very small gaming bundle as in um no actual game just more the the uh, peripheries uh, peripherals so did see these uh, sitting around and this is something that I was missing from a, so a couple of weeks ago I had um, a full rock band pickup um, and there was the dongle missing so whilst I had the drums, the guitar, um, all the other bits and pieces the one thing it was missing was this and this is what connects uh, allows the Bluetooth guitar to actually connect up to uh, the Wii so that was missing and then I thought right well if I need to get that, how much is it? That on its own, on eBay, seems to go for between 15 and 20 pounds. Um, so I've been, but it's basically, I, I had the choice of splitting the bundle, uh, the, the full box um, uh, rock band, or waiting until I could buy one at a decent price on eBay, which hasn't happened, and I've just seen that on its own. So I saw that. There was also a rock band USB splitter, and there was also a random uh, Wii nunchuck. Um, basically I picked these three up and said how much would you like and the lady said two pounds so um, it's always useful to have uh, spare nunchucks so um, yeah so basically I needed a spare so that's perfect for that. That I can flip, don't know how much that would go for but it's branded uh, Wii Rock Band and um, this is exactly what I needed to complete my Rock Band package so um, now I've got that I should be able to flip that quite quickly. Um, I don't know if the prices have tanked since but when I picked it up um, we'd recently come out of lockdown and prices were at an all time high from what I could see so it was easily going for, for £100-£125 for Rock Band. Don't know if if that's going to be the case anymore but at least I can sell it complete or if I do need to pass it out because sometimes selling um, off the drum section, selling off the microphone bits and selling off the, the guitar bits, it might actually be um, a uh, more profitable to do that and it will certainly be easier to post. So um, I do need to have a little think about that but at least I've completed that little package now. So um, that was my little gaming pickups. This I really quite like it, so I'll just bring it up so you can see. So, this is a clock by Liberty, so you should recognise that if uh, if you're into your clothing. Um, so the, the clock is actually by Alison and Ross, um, who, who make sort of mantle clocks. And what's quite nice, this is a proper, um, proper marquetry wood. Glass, this is not plastic. 
it's nothing fancy, but I didn't actually intend to, to buy this for reselling. I, I haven't actually looked, uh, well, I did have a look at comps and they don't, they seem to go wildly anywhere from sort of 10 pounds to, I think it was about 40, depending on, on who the Edison and Ross clock was for. Um, but I didn't see any Liberty one, so there, there may be some value in it, but I'm thinking of replacing that orange thing up there with this as it, it kind of suits the house. So it's got a nice sort of vintage um, style to it. I do like Liberty. So um, that was two pounds. So um, yeah, really happy with that. So um, this is my only other piece of electronics I've, I've picked up today other than the little gaming bits and pieces. Um, I will pick up some videos at Boosars, but I won't pick up all videos. Um, I tend to try and stick to Sony uh, and Panasonic really if I can because as um, as I was growing up in my 20s they were the best brands so they're going to be the best for reselling. Um, I appreciate there's still going to be money in, in some of the, the lesser known brands but I particularly just prefer that I, they were better made at the time so I believe they're going to be better for selling on now. Um, I might be mistaken on that, but that's just my, my personal preference. Um, this I picked up, I think they were asking, yeah, they were asking 10, I paid nine in the end. And it's a Sony um, SLV SE740. So decent spec machine, um, no remote with there, which is unfortunate. Um, this sort of spec with a remote, goes between sort of 50 and 60-ish pounds plus postage, without the remote a little bit less, so somewhere between sort of 30, 35 pounds, but nine pounds out and turn that into 35 um, plus postage, um, I'm happy with that. So it's a, it's a decent amount of profit on there. Um, one of the things that I, I think I'm gonna start doing for all my videos now, um, rather than uh, sending them out as they are once once I've tested them, is actually clean the heads before they go out because um, I was watching George Ross a little while ago and he had a, a VHS player go out and it, uh, the buyer complained saying it was a, a terrible picture and um, George got, got the, um, the video uh, recorder back and then had to clean the heads and then it was working perfectly and, and to be honest, to, to clean the heads, it is literally removing a couple of screws um, and then cleaning the head with some isopropyl alcohol. So I think it might be worth me showing everyone a, a video at some point. So I'll, I'll do a, an in-depth video. It's not that in-depth, it's just pretty easy to do um, cleaning the head. So I'll, I'll do a little video of how to clean video heads. But my thoughts are, if I can preemptively prevent a problem happening for the, for the five to 10 minutes it's gonna take me to clean the heads, it's well, well worth me doing it so that I don't get a return because I'll end up having to pay postage out, postage back. And it's just a waste of my time as well. So, um, and also, if, if I get a return, it, it affects my eBay account. So for me, um, it makes sense to spend that that five to ten minutes on, on actually cleaning the heads before I actually send it out. Um, and obviously, when when I do sell them, I also will take a photo of it actually working. So, um, but yeah, that that should be um, an easy thirty thirty five pound sale out of a nine pound outlay. So I'm um, not too bad there. So I've had a, a couple of shoe pickups. I haven't gone crazy this week, um, on, only the two pairs, um, but should do all right out of them. So I've got some uh, Nike blazers, but these are leather. Um, I've bought and sold um, suede ones before. A little bit of a pain to, to clean up, but they've gone for about 30, 35 quid or thereabouts. Um, Leather ones should do nicely. Uh, again, in this sort of colorway, it's something that's quite striking and different. The only bad bit is that there's a bit of the pigment's gone when people are walking and it's rubbed on the inside. So have a look, make sure it's not damaged. Just because the pigment's gone doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it, but it just means that you will need to put some, um, so for, this is a oxblood, so I need to get some oxblood um, shoe cream to uh, to put more pigment back into it. But once I've done that and given these a good clean and the polish, these will look as new. Uh, again, as, as normal when you buy the trainers, always do the flex test to make sure there's no cracking, make sure there's no puckering around the edges. Um, check inside the heel um, for wear, because this is where it wears out the most. You'll sometimes get bobbling, uh, but you can get rid of that with uh, a debobbler. 
Um, I have two debobblers. I have uh, one specifically for clothing, um, and then I have a, a smaller, cheaper one, which I use for shoes. And that's where you, you can use the, uh, it's useful is the, the backs of the heels where you, you get some bobbling. So <coughs> these were, f uh, they wanted five, I offered four, we agreed on four. Um, but I should be able to achieve around the £30 mark or thereabouts. So, um, yeah, good good knit. I might push a little bit higher. Um, I don't mind if they're sitting there for a little while, but, yeah, happy with that. And then this is a, another staple of mine. Um, Nike, uh, I've always called them Harachis, but apparently they are pronounced Warachis. Um, but I've never heard anyone ever say that. So, <coughs> these uh, I paid... It was either four or five, I don't remember. Um, but these are in good condition. Plenty of uh, tread left. Um, again, done the bend test, it's good. These, there are sometimes fakes out there. Um, and it's just over the years, I I know the sort of the feel and the balance and look of this um, specific uh, Nike trainer. So um, it, it's easier for me to tell, but you do need to be careful because there are sometimes counterfeit ones out there. Um, but again, you've always got the little Nike label on the inside, which you can look up the code. See. Inside the shoe, you've got that, that label and there's a six digit code. And that six digit code, you can punch that into your phone on Google and that will show you the exact same shoe and the three digit code after that is the colorway. So if you jab that into your phone when you're out and about at a car boot, so you can check if they are genuine. Um, counterfeiters, I guess they could get the same code, but the, the reality is <clears throat> they're not that, that um, sophisticated most of the time. So um, that, that's one little way, but just knowing the feel and the weight of a trainer will also help make sure that you don't end up getting um, counterfeits. Um, a lot of the time the counterfeits will use a different type of EVA midsole and it's cheaper and you can feel that so and it's, it's often lighter so um, they tend to wear down a lot faster so if they're really heavily worn on the ball, balls of the feet then again they're, they're either knackered not worth selling or the odds are they're going to be counterfeit if they're quite lightweight and heavily worn so um, yeah but these pay it was either four or five I should be able to flip in this colorway I reckon I can actually probably get 25, I might even push towards 30. Um, certain colorways of these, if, if these were all just plain black, uh, it tends to be a little bit lower, sort of 18 to 20, but quite nice colors, should get 25 plus for these. So for, for four to five pound outlay um, on each of these, there's some decent money to be made. So my, my next buy is a raincoat. So, one of my uh, my favourite brands that I like to pick up is Aquascutum. Um, they are a a British manufacturer that has been making raincoats, trench coats, that sort of thing for many many years. Very very similar and along the lines of, of Burberry. Um, I've, I've mentioned it before. So a Burberry trench, well, brand new. You're looking at about fourteen hundred pounds. Where an Aquascutum trench, you're looking around the sort of high eight hundred nine hundred pounds mark. Um, I, I think they're often undervalued and you can pick them up quite well. Um, so I picked up this, I was looking at a rack of clothes and um, immediately saw the, the Aquascutum sign. And it's not the same sort of, uh, it's not the higher end um, raincoat, it's not like the normal trenches that I do try to pick up. This is, is definitely a lower grade um, of, of Aquascutum coat. However, after checking, always checking my buttons, closures, pockets, armpits, any rips, tears, that sort of stuff. Um, after checking that, asked how much it was, and they said one pound. I paid a pound for an Aquascutum coat. So, um, recently I sold a, an Aquascutum trench. I had it out for 130. I sold, I took an offer, sold it for 110. Um, but that was the higher end Aqua Scoot and Co. This one I don't think is going to get anywhere near that. I think this is probably going to be closer to a £40 mark. But I paid a pound. So whether that's sitting there for three months to a year, I don't care. It's, it's cost me a pound and I should be able to turn that into an easy 40 at some point. Um, doesn't take up much room once it's all, all packed up. So that is uh, that was a really good buy. When I was looking on, on 
on this side, well, I said how much is it? He said a pound. Everything on the rails a pound. I sniffed through again. Because something, it was a brand I'd not seen before. Um, it was a, a men's jacket by Krizia Umo. I'll show you the, the label in a moment. And there wasn't much in the way of labelling on this one. You could feel it's quite well made, or it's a nice material. All the buttons were there, no rips, tears. Uh, the things that, I, that caught my eye, made in Italy. And as much as I look, I could not find um, details on what it was made of or, or sizing or anything. Um, and I just took a punt because I thought it, it feels nice, I reckon, at a pound. I, I can't go wrong. Um, having looked for comps afterwards, I can't find hardly anything. There's a, literally a handful of sold items. Um, it seems that like they do a lot of perfumes and that sort of stuff, but actual menswear, Hardly anything, whether it's UK, global, whatever, not an awful lot at all. So I don't know whether it's that they, they don't exist anymore, um, but I, I, the only items I could see for sale were either on um, eBay, Poshmark, Macari, um, Grail, all, all those sort of um, the, the used clothing markets. I couldn't find an, an awful lot out there at all. So I it can't be a fail because I've only paid a pound. So they're... Oh, whatever happens, I'm going to make at least a tenner profit. I'll probably push for a little bit higher. Um, do I want this sitting on my shelf for years? If it was a more well-known brand, I have no problem when I can put something up at a high price and let it sit there because I know there will be a market for it. This, I have no idea if there's a market for it because I can't see that any are selling. So um, it won't be a fail, but... I might push this out a little bit cheaper just to get um, to get it moving. So maybe price it high initially, give it a month or so, see if um, what what the amount of views are like, and then push it out cheaper if if I need to get get rid. But um, I'll just come around and I'll show you the label so you can see. So you can see it was made in Italy, and that that's what sparked my interest initially. And this is the label. Crisia Umo, made in Italy. Never heard of it. There's no detailing inside any of the pockets, but I could see it was a, a well-made article. Feels like it's either 100% wool or it's a cashmere mix, but again, I can't prove that. I can't find anything, so um, we shall see on that one. And then the Aquascutum raincoat, so that's up close so you can see Aquascutum. So by appointment, uh, um, to HM Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mother, makers of weatherproof garments. Aquascutum of London, made in England. So really good to, to keep on your radar, Aquascutum. Um, I, I pick up quite a lot of their coats. So um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely buy if you see. So this next one is a definite bolo. Um, I've only ever picked up one piece by N Peel before. I'll show you the label in a moment. N Peel are N as in November, Peel, P-E-A-L. Um, they first came to my knowledge after seeing an advert in uh, a magazine, and it was for, uh, it was one of the James Bond movies, and it basically was a, a marketing thing, saying that, you know, the Daniel Craig, the, the, the latest James Bond, wears N. Peel Kashmir. And, all they do is cashmere. Bloody hole. There's a tiny little hole in this. Right, okay, possible fail. M Peel. If you were looking uh, on their website, a cardigan brand new starts at around £240. Um, so, really, really, really high quality British um, manufacturer. And yeah, I paid £2. Second hand comps vary quite a lot. You're looking anywhere between 40 and 100 pounds, and that's going to depend on whether it is current season or a classic look or a more fashionable color. So, if you've got, you might have something which is in beautiful condition, but it's a not so popular color or not so popular um, item, you're not going to get your higher, higher prices. If it's an en vogue color or style, you may get higher. Um, Bright colours always go quite well for me. 
So whilst I did look for holes, I did miss one. It's, it's always difficult with a car boot sale. Um, it's repairable. But um, yeah, not quite as good as I thought initially because I thought there were no holes. Uh, I'll just bring it up so you can see the label. So that's the label, very, very plain. But these are fantastic. And that is the hole that I missed. It's not big. It's repairable. I'll have to declare it. But it's annoying. But again, you can see nice iridescent buttons. And it's a bit bright. There you go. So 100% cashmere. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely one to, um, to keep on your bolo list. I'm very, very nearly done already. I've not, not gone crazy at the car boot today. Uh, and I, I was, I was restrained for two, two reasons. Well, I was restrained because I'm running out of storage space. So I'm, I'm trying to either get something that is easy and quick to flip or a much higher margin. So, um, normally I try and get over my, my 20 pound margin, but if it's quick to flip, I'll try and do that or it's got to be a much higher margin. So I've, I've been less experimental with my pickups at the moment. Um, but sometimes it's definitely, definitely worth paying up. And today um, was one of those days. So again, another Aquascutum coat, but this is the, um, the classic traditional trench. So this is the ladies trench, which came with the matching scarf, so it's got the matching, I think it's called Novacek, the, um, this sort of style of check is Novacek, that's as far as I remember. And what you'll often find with trench coats is that the belts are missing, this has its belt, or this, uh, because Aquascutum are a very high quality manufacturer, you'll find that cheaper brands will have, uh, it's like a leatherette or a plastic wrapping around the buckle and this is actual proper leather sometimes you'll find it cracks so this includes the belt where they're often missing it's in good condition the belt the, um, there's a, a couple of little marks but i think i can get them out and one of the buttons on the pockets is missing so this this one's here that's the only other one that's that's gone but um yeah aqua scoop and coat this is very very similar to the one that i sold for uh, for just over 100 quid um lady was asking 20 um i offered 15 and she accepted so i think a lot of people they'll, they'll go to a car boot sale and they'll they'll think oh i'm in a car boot so i'm not paying 15 pound for this or 15 pound for that for certain items it's definitely worth paying up for and because i have that experience of i have previously sold this i know what it will go for um they, they do sometimes go for less and people undersell them. They, they really do because these are a decent, decent brand. But I will hold my um, hold my nerve and I will hold out. And whilst it doesn't mean £15 is going to be sitting on my shelf for quite a while, I will get over £100 for this. It just means it may take a little while. So, um, but yeah, really, really pleased with that. So um, again, yes, Aquascutum, definitely have that on your, on your Bolo list. A um, few little marks, but shouldn't be too much of a drama getting those out. But... Um, yeah, really, really nice little pickup there. And my final pickup of the day is another brand that I love, love to find, and that is Reese. There's uh, the label there. Um, if you are not aware of Reese, again, this. Um, a high-end high street brand so you'll find that um like a, a, a reese winter coat you're probably looking at three to four hundred pounds upwards uh leather jacket like this you're probably looking in the same sort of region around the 300 pounds mark um similar sort of quality to karen millen um yeah really really good brand to keep an eye out for um this is a biker's jacket Bikers jackets always go well for me. Um, 
it's a leather jacket. So I've got the benefit is leather, it's a biker's jacket, it's in pink, which is always popular, sort of like a baby pink. Check your zips, always make sure your zips are okay. Um, this is in, in good condition, no snags. Um, with, with leather, look for discoloration and wear. And again, you know, usual touch points are your, the cuffs around where your zips are and around where the hem is. Um, and being a lighter colour, I don't expect it to pick up dirt and, and other stuff. And this, this is in genuinely really, really good condition. So really pleased with that. Um, it's lamb leather. So <clears throat> I've sold a couple of, the, I've had a few high-end leather jackets sell, ladies ones. And when you look at the label, they're often lamb leather, and lamb's leather, is, it's just softer. So um, I don't know whether that makes any difference in your listings or not, but it does say it on the inside on the, the labeling. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll mention it's lamb's leather in within the listing, but on the on the main listing title, I will call it leather. Um, another good thing about Reese is that they will put the name of the actual item in there. So on the actual receipt, this one says Frey, F-R-A-Y. So it just makes it a little bit easier to find um, comp prices on eBay because you know exactly the name of the, the item that was being sold. So um, always check your, your main label in, in Reese Outfits. Um, what did she want for this? She wanted 20 for it and again I offered 15 and she took it. Um, she also had a few other bits on there. She had a Jean Paul Gaultier. Um, it's like a like a heavy heavyweight cardigan with a zip, uh, so zip up cardigan. But it was brown and it wasn't what I thought was a particularly good brown. So if if it was a black or another colour, probably would have gone for the the Gaultier um, cardi. But I didn't think it was. Whilst the price was, I could have probably got that for fifteen as well. I don't think it would sell quickly just because I didn't think it was a popular colour. I might be wrong, but that's that's my opinion. So um, yeah, really, really pleased with that. That that should sell relatively quickly. Um, Fifteen pound out. Uh, I sold a Ted Baker black leather jacket um, for ninety pounds recently. Um, so I would have thought I'd probably price this around the same sort of end. I'll, I'll probably put it up for about 120. Um, I need to check comps, I haven't looked at comps yet, but I would have thought it would be putting it up for around the 120 pound mark and, um, and probably take off as of around 80 plus, we'll see. But um, yeah, always, always, always keep an eye out for Reese. Um, really good brand to pick up and it, it's a high quality item. Um, so that's it actually, this is a really, really quick video because I haven't, haven't spent a lot. And it was, a, it was a decent sized car boot sale. So part of the reason I'm, I've been more restrained is that I've got a lot of stock. So I, I was only trying to pick the cream of the crop, but there just, it, it just didn't seem to be that, that much there today. So what I don't want to do is get into the habit of, oh, I've got 200 pound in my pocket, I need to spend it. Um, I've got to be very, very focused on I need to buy items that I know will sell for decent margins. If it will not sell for a decent margin, don't pick it up. I, I, I don't want to start making sort of desperation purchases. And because I'm a part-timer, I'm not reliant on this income. My, my day job pays for the, the house and the car, the bills, whatever else. Um, and this is additional money. So I can afford to be more picky than if I was doing this full-time. So that is why I, I don't go out and buy desperately. If something's got a, a problem or a hole or a, a like for example, the, the NPL um, cardigan, if I'd have spotted the holes, would I still pick that up? It's two quid, I probably would have done. If it was something like a, a, a lower brand, it's more hassle than it's worth. So I, and it would have ended up sitting on my death pile and, and it would just be wasted money going out. So I'm being much more focused now on is it going to be quick to flip or will I make a lot of margin? If it's not one of those, I need to not pick it up. Um, I did pick up that um, that other, that one pound jacket. But I took it as a punt. Uh, one pound, you, you've got to experiment if it's only a pound. But um, you just don't want to fill up your house with one pound 
stuff which you, you're just never going to make any margin on or it's just going to sit on a death pass. So um, that's my tip of the week. Um, be, be focused on your purchasing um, because if you're focused on your purchasing, it will make your, your business run better. If you're making good buys, you'll make more margin and you'll have a, a business that will make you more money. So um, that's my random thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that has been useful, interesting, or even vaguely entertaining. Uh, and that's about it. I did do, I did have my action cam with me, so I will put together a, a little f um, Lee foraging at the car boot sale uh, video at some point. But um, otherwise, that's it for me. So I shall see you next time. So thanks for tuning in. Um, if it was useful, interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subbed, please do. And hopefully, my ramblings will be able to provide some sort of interest or education which might help you. Um, make better purchases in the future. So um, take care and I'll see you next time.